watching just the news i'm amita balachandra straight up to our top story india has ranked 132 among 191 countries in the 2021 un human development index now this is one spot below uh, the position it held in 2020 now india's neighboring countries like sri lanka china bangladesh and bhutan ranked above india uh, countries like myanmar pakistan and nepal performed lower than india switzerland ranked first followed by norway and iceland now despite the change india has continued to remain in the category of countries with medium human development the report also considers factors like citizens ability to lead a long and healthy life access to knowledge and a decent standard of living moving on now to another report by uh, united nations women and un uh, department of economic and social affairs that says that closing gaps in legal protections and removing discriminatory laws against women at current rate could set back achieving global gender equality by 286 years now the un had set gender equality as one of the 17 sustainable development goals in 2015 and had set the target to be achieved by 2030 now the report also adds that factors like the pandemic black backlash against women's sexual and reproductive health and rights violence against women and climate and a humanitarian crisis have increased risks for women and girls also in the news the center has informed the delhi high court that it will introduce a system to regulate social media uh, platforms at some point in the future which could include guidelines on permanent suspension of user accounts now the statement was made in an affidavit uh, filed after justice yashwant varma asked the government about its plans to regulate social media saying that the policies would have an impact on the petitions before the court now the court uh, has been hearing a batch of petitions challenging the suspension of user accounts by social media platforms in the affidavit however the center did not specify any time frame as to when this would happen the case is now going to be heard next on december 19th also the supreme court will hear a batch of petitions challenging constitutional validity of the citizenship amendment act or caa on the 12th of september now over 200 petitions have been filed against the law which is yet to be implemented however home minister amit shah said that it will be implemented as soon as the pandemic ends now a bench led by chief justice of india u u lalit uh, will hear the matter uh, to give you a bit of a context caa was passed by the parliament of india on 11th december 2019 it provides citizenship to refugees from six non muslim religious communities from bangladesh afghanistan uh, and pakistan on the condition that they have lived in india for 6 years and entered the country by december 31st 2014 Now the act however is yet to be implemented and its rules have not yet been framed because of covid. Now there were massive protests across the country in 2020 with people contending that the act promotes religion based discrimination. Also in the news according to a report by Reuters uh, Union Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has said that India has asked e-commerce company Amazon to stop selling devices designed to disable seat belt alarms in cars now this comes after former Tata Sons chairperson Cyrus Mistry died in a car accident on Sunday he and his co-passenger who passed away uh, were in the back seat of the car but were not wearing seat belts according to a preliminary probe now earlier this week Nitin Gadkari also said that wearing seat belts for all passengers would be made mandatory and that uh, fines will be levied for not wearing them in the back seat of the car he also added that the center is aiming to make at least 6 airbags mandatory uh, in 8 seater cars also in the news uh, offices of the independent and public spirited media foundation the center for policy research and ngo oxfam india were raided yesterday by the income tax department in a statement dg pub news india foundation has condemned the raids uh, it said that this is an assault on and i quote independent journalism and research end quote now the media collective noted that this was not the first time that such raids have taken place uh, in recent years the news minute uh, citing official sources have said 
that the raids and surveys were conducted in separate cases related to alleged tax evasion, FCRA violations and illicit funding of registered unrecognized uh, political parties as well. Moving on now, according to uh, IMD, the South Peninsula region of the country will continue to see heavy and widespread rainfall over the next two to three days. Now, it further added that Peninsula India had already recorded 31% excess rain since June 1st. Bengaluru urban areas, uh, parts of which are flooded, uh, already affected for, by flood since uh, the 5th of September, recorded 166% excess rain during the monsoon. On to politics right now. While addressing a program in Kolkata, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has said that she will join hands with Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Soren for the upcoming 2024 elections. Now, Mamta Banerjee said, and I quote, I, Nitish Kumar, Heman Soren and many others will come together in 2024. All opposition parties will join hands to defeat the BJP. All of us will be on one side and BJP on the other. End quote. Earlier, Nitish Kumar had met NCP leader Sharad Pawar and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi to discuss the formation of an opposition alliance against the BJP. On to news from Assam now. According to a report by ANI, Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has claimed that madrasas uh, that have been demolished in the state recently were offices of the terrorist organization Al Qaeda. Now, the statement comes a day after residents of Kolpada district uh, demolished a madrasa as a cleric associated with it was arrested for allegedly being involved in anti national activities. Now, while the residents uh, raised the madrasa in Golpada, the Assam government has demolished three other in such institutions in just a month. Now, he, uh, the chief minister claimed, and I quote, all demolished madrasas were not madrasas but Al-Qaeda offices. We demolished two to three and now the public is coming to demolish others, end quote. Moving on now, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, inaugurated the revamped Central Vista Avenue this evening. The new look stretch covers lawns on either side of the two kilometer long Rajpath, now renamed as Kartavyapat, uh, from Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate. Now, this is part of the larger Central Vista project, which envisages a new triangular parliament building and the rebuilding of the Central Secretariat and other government offices. Now, in the meantime, in May, uh, this, is, uh, this uh, uh, redevelopment project is met with a lot of criticism. Uh, in May 2020, 60 former bureaucrats wrote to Prime Minister Modi and Union Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs, Hardeep Singh Puri, arguing that the project would damage both heritage, heritage and environment. Now, several petitions were filed uh, in the Supreme Court but were eventually dismissed as well. The Supreme Court in Jan 2021 approved the Central Vista Redevelopment Plan. In fact, in a majority opinion, the Supreme Court said that the change in land use under DDA Act is proper. Moving on, India and uh, Chinese troops have started to disengage from eastern Ladakh's Gogra Hot Springs area in a coordinated and planned way. Now, a joint statement that has been released uh, by both India and China says, and I quote, On 8 September 2022, according to the consensus reached in the 16th round of India-China Corps Co uh, Commander level meeting, the Indian and Chinese troops in the area of Gogra Hot Springs, uh, PP-15, have begun to disengage in a coordinated and planned way, which is conducive to the peace and tranquility in the border areas. End quote. Now, India and China have been engaged in a standoff ever since the Chinese army breached the border in multiple areas in between April and May 2020. The situation, in fact, worsened after a violent face-off between India and China in Galwan Valley in June 2020. Now, the talks have led to disengagement from some areas, including the north and south banks of uh, Pangong So and uh, Galwan, but some friction points still remain. On to news coming in from across the world right now. Uh, Ukrainian forces in the northeastern Kharkiv region have 
retaken portions of Russian held territory and this is a claim that's been made by Ukraine. Now, um, the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the south has drained some of uh, Moscow's resources and this development, uh, according to Ukraine, comes after that. Uh, without delving into further details, Ukraine's president has said, and I quote, this week, we have good news from the Kharkiv region. You have probably already seen reports about the activity of Ukrainian defenders. And I think every citizen feels proud of our warriors, end quote. Now, according to a report by CNN, Russian officials have so far remained silent on these developments in Kharkiv. In the meantime, the United States has approved nearly $2.7 billion in new aid for Ukraine and allies, uh, including $675 million in weapons for Ukraine as it battles Russia. Now, the Biden administration said on Thursday that it had earmarked $2 billion in long-term assistance in the form of investments to bolster the security of Ukraine and 18 of its neighbors, including both uh, NATO members and non-members at risk of future Russian aggression. Also in the news, four people were killed and three were injured in a shooting incident in US's Memphis. Now following this, a 19-year-old suspect was arrested. Uh, this comes after Memphis reported several violent crimes in recent weeks. Now there's a Washington Post report that says that the accused has earlier been charged with first-degree murder and was released uh, from prison this year after serving three years for aggravated assault. We leave you with one piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin. The Indian women's football team started its campaign at the SAFF Women's Championship 2022 with a 3-0 win over Pakistan in a Group A match on Wednesday in Kathmandu. Now, India has been clubbed in the Group A uh, along with, along with uh, Pakistan, Mal Maldives and Bangladesh. Now, the Indian team will take on Maldives on the 10th of September and Bangladesh on the 13th of September. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.